Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is a very special instalment of my Iron Man inspired Hulkbuster build, which is standing behind me. Previously, I've built a wooden frame that you can climb into, unlock all the joints using 3D printed mechanics and bicycle brake cords and snowboard bindings. You can then walk around operating the arms, which will be mechatronic, through two joysticks. I'm in the middle of building the body panels and putting some of the electronics in. Some of these cardboard ones are temporary just to give you an idea of what it's going to be like when it's finished. But check out the previous episodes for how I built the shoulder bells, the hand plates and some of the other bits and pieces. This episode is going to be about building the Unibeam and Arc Reactor, which is a combined unit. This is Iron Man's energy generator and repulsor weapon that fits in the chest of the suit, where I've currently got this clear dome. In fact, this part's been designed for me by a company called Adafruit, who are located in New York in the United States. Adafruit are a really cool company. They put all sorts of stuff on their blog. Projects about cosplay and prop building and other cool gadgets made from items that they sell along with full tutorials. They've got a really good learning system that tells you all about programming Arduino and using all of the products. There's a link in the description to this video to the Adafruit learning system where you can find out all about how to build this for yourself, including downloading the 3D printable files. There's also a YouTube video in the Adafruit YouTube channel that tells you all about it. I'll put those links in the description for everyone to have a look at. If you'd like to see more projects with Adafruit, then make sure you like this video and comment on it to let everyone know. And make sure you watch the Adafruit video in their channel and like and comment on that video as well. That means I can get some more cool stuff to put in my Hulkbuster suit and other projects. So Adafruit have sent me this circuit diagram as well as the components pictured, which I'll show you shortly. And also a CAD file drawn in Autodesk 123D Design, which needs to be 3D printed. So this is the main structure for the Unibeam. And um, as we can see, we've got multiple layers, which are separated by these spacers. So we need to print um, four for one layer and three on the other layer. Apart from that, we've got three layers, which hold all of the LED rings, which were pictured in the circuit diagram. So let me get this printed off and then hopefully we can assemble it. So here are my 3D printed parts. We've got the base there and we've got these little stalks that hold some of the LEDs and these have got little holes in so that we can feed the wires through so everything's fairly well planned. And we've got the layer that goes on top and various spacers which plug into the bottom. So these plug in here and that allows the next layer to be spaced up. And then we've got another set of spacers that clip onto that layer and that allows the top layer to clip on. And all of these recesses are specifically designed for the LED rings. So I'm going to acetone weld these spacers on. These parts are ABS so I can dissolve them in acetone and use it as a glue to stick them together. I'm also going to be painting it up in various colours. So the base is going to come out in gold. And these parts I'm going to paint up in some chrome auto paint. Okay, so I've painted up the parts here. So I've painted the top part here in the silver and I've painted the bottom there in gold, which looks quite nice. So I've got a twin tone. And I've assembled all of the little stands and things, so these fit into the slots. I'm not going to stick them together just yet because I need to put the electronics in. So I've got the box of electronics here from Adafruit. Here we go, so it was pa nicely packed in bubble wrap, but obviously I've looked in it since. So let's see what we've got. So we've got some batteries, triple A's, and we've got a triple A battery box, which I think is for three of those. Um, you'll also notice all the Adafruit stuff has these nice little connectors on. Um, and somewhere in here is an extension lead for that connector as well. So we've got one of these things that plugs in there quite nicely. There we go, that makes it much longer. So that's really good. You don't have to mess around with um, sort of bare ends of wire or anything like that for these parts. So what we've got here is the Arduino Gemma, which is specifically designed by Adafruit, which is a tiny wearable Arduino. You can see the um, Adafruit branding on the back of it. It's got solder pads on it. Um, it's got a connector that hopefully fits on this battery connector. Yep, and also a USB mini, which is for programming. 
So there's a lot of information on the Adafruit learning system about the Gemma. Um, this is designed to be wearable and you can use conductive thread and there's all sorts of fancy things you can do with it, all sorts of tutorials. There's also a lot of information on how to set up your Arduino programming environment to use it. They've shoehorned quite a lot of code into the tiny chip so that it works like an Arduino. There are a few things you need to consider, so have a look at that. We've also got um, some various wire. We've got some silicon wire to wire this up, which is incredibly flexible. And I've chosen white, black and grey wire so that it fits nicely with our colour scheme instead of, you know, bright red or something. And we've got a little push switch, which is to select the modes of it. So this is a... Uh, a latching switch with two wires we can solder on to our Gemma. All right, now the um, best things about this one are the LED rings. So these are the NeoPixel rings. I've got here the Flora NeoPixel ring. Let's just have a look at the labels on the others. So I believe that one is a number of LEDs. It could be 18. I've also got a 24. So these are um, these rings of LEDs are RGB LEDs which light up in different colours and you can individually address each LED in the ring so it works a bit like a shift register where with these NeoPixels you put them all in line so the input of one comes from the output of the previous one. And I've also got a number of individual NeoPixels here which are these things and those work in exactly the same way. So essentially we will wire from the data out of the Arduino into these and daisy chain them all together into one of the rings and out and into the other ring. And then we can decide that we want any individual LED, either these individual ones or any of the ones on the rings to be any color. And I believe we can fade them up and down as well. So that's extremely useful. You can get these in long strips as well. Have a look at the Adafruit Learning Center for more on NeoPixel. And there's lots of things like light up shoes and clothing of course with the wearable Gemma and other microcontrollers. So these things fit into here quite nicely. The 24 uh, LED ring fits just in there. Uh, 18, I believe it is, fits in there. Our Gemma fits right in the middle. And the individual NeoPixels are going to mount on these posts all the way around. So we should have quite a lot of light in this thing when all of them are switched on. So we just need to wire these up with um, a daisy chain of data and power to each LED and wire that to our Arduino Gemma in the middle. And I've also got some copper wire that I had in my spares box. I'm going to use this for some of it, probably the data connections, which I'm going to wind around these posts so they look like a bit like um, electrical power components or something like that just to set off the whole design. So uh, let's get wiring and put that together. Then hopefully we can program the code into the Arduino and get it powered up. So I'm just working my way around there, putting copper wire around those windings so they look like something. Um, the wire is quite thick, so I'm having a few issues shaping it, but it's um, taking shape, taking a little bit of time, but just gives it that extra impression that it's something Tony Stark would be proud of. So I've just been wiring in the power wires to my NeoPixels. I've used grey wire that you can just about see inside there. Um, I've not bothered running it through the holes that, that have been supplied in the stilts for each NeoPixel. I've just run it on the surface, but I'm pretty sure it looks more like a thing with more wires in. So if I just take this off, you can kind of see that. I've got the ground wires to do, and I need to run the wires for data and power to the next level, and then we should be done. So I've got everything wired up. I've got my battery box here, and I've got my two switches which go through holes in the back, handily to the um, wiring points on the Gemma. So let's look at the Arduino code and see what it does. So here's the Arduino code supplied by Adafruit, and you can find this code as well as the 3D printable STLs and the wiring diagram and everything you need to build this in the link in the description. There's quite a lot of code with notes. You don't really need to understand it. 
um, but we're going to program up the Arduino Gemma with this code and see what it does. Now you need a specific version of Arduino, I've got 1.0.5 which seems to be the most compatible and you also really need to follow the instructions for using the Gemma. There's quite a bit of a process to patching 1.0.5 in order to get it to work so that all the code will fit in such a tiny space. Um, there is also a downloadable version which has already been patched which is the one I'd recommend to do this. So all we need to do is click on the upload button but we also need to check that the Gemma is waiting for the upload um, and the way to do that is to press the little switch on the Arduino Gemma board until the LED flashes and that means it's ready to receive the upload and I believe it does that for 10 seconds which is kind of the window you've got to click on the upload button. So let's power that up and see what it does. Hopefully you can see all the LEDs from there. It takes a couple of seconds for the Arduino to boot. And we should see this rather um, pleasant spinning effect of all of the NeoPixels. And we've got two switches, so if I press this one, it takes a couple of seconds for the switch press to register. Um, so they're latching switches, but we just need to switch them on for a couple of seconds. And we should find it changes colour to green. If I do the same thing again, it should get red. And the other button makes the Unibeam fire, so if we hit that one, we should get this good spinning effect and then we should get full intensity white with a big pulse. There it is. And it powers back down to red again. At that point we should be able to scroll back through the colours again. There we go. So basically I'm going to be controlling these switches with a microcontroller so I can um, make them the uh, output of that microcontroller go low for a few seconds to activate the different functions and I can control that from the central control system of the suit. So let's see what it looks like in the chest piece. So I've temporarily fitted the Unibeam into the chest plate there. I've got this dome that I mentioned at the beginning and I also mentioned I think that these cardboard panels are temporary to be replaced with pieces like the shoulder belts which are going to be made of foam which is sealed and painted. So I'm just going to turn the lights off so we can see it a bit more clearly. And that's just in its normal mood, uh, mode in blue, so let's just press the button to fire. And there we go. So that's the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more collaborations in my channel with Adafruit using their cool electronic parts then make sure you comment on this video to let me know. Also make sure you watch the Adafruit video about this project, the link's on the screen now and there's also a link in the description to this video for mobile users. Make sure you watch that video and comment on their video to let them know and also like both videos.